Thank you, Mr. Curtis. Our first speaker will be Dr. James Lark. Dr. Lark is a professor of systems engineering at the University of Virginia and recently served as national party director of the Liber national director of the Libertarian Party. Thank you. represents all that is best about that experiment. A good friend of mine, John Hosness, professor of law at Georgetown, used to ask his students to name the things that they felt really do represent the best about America, the things about America about which we are most proud. And virtually without exception, people would identify things such as freedom of religion, freedom of speech, and the like. And almost all of those things that people were identifying as that which is best about America represent limitations on the power of government. And those limitations are represented with the ideas that, in effect, the government is a, an institution of limited and enumerated powers, but the powers that the government has are given to it by the people. These ideas are represented by the various amendments in the Bill of Rights. And I think it's very important that each year we remember the importance of individual liberty and those freedoms that are guaranteed to us. I should also note, of course, that the freedoms pre-exist government. People have these freedoms prior to the formation of government. The Bill of Rights simply reflects the nature of those freedoms. We codify them basically to indicate that they're, they, the government does not bestow these freedoms upon us. We have them uh, as a matter of right. And I'm delighted to see people assembling here this, this day to pay tribute to the Bill of Rights and to show that there are people in this country who still understand the importance of those Bill of Rights. Thank you very much. I'd like to speak a little bit about the Tenth Amendment. The Tenth Amendment speaks to the heart of the principle of limited government. Article 1, Section 8 of the Constitution specifically lists or enumerates the powers of the federal government. They include a military, federal courts, etc. The Tenth Amendment clearly says, unless a function is specifically listed in the Constitution, it is left to the states or the people. The founders set up a system where there was competition among states for the best ideas. On any given topic, some states would perform well, some would pass, would pass imprudent laws, and some would stay out of it completely, which is my particular favorite option. But there was competition, and competition breeds excellence. Yes, you would have a couple of bad apples, but these would soon reform under the pressure of that competition. It is far better than focusing all the power in Washington and having one huge rotten apple. The top-down, centralized government model is a failure, just like it was in the former Soviet Union. Right. Sadly, the Tenth Amendment has been brushed aside. The federal government has slowly, over the years, become involved in education, finance, retirement savings, crime control, transportation, health care. The list goes on and on and on. In fact, it is difficult to name one aspect of our lives the tentacles of the national bureaucracy do not reach. Because government possesses the unique characteristic of the reverse Midas touch, most of that intervention, intervention has resulted in making things worse and or creating new unforeseen negative ill side effects. So what happened? On one, on one hand, we have a well-written constitution that wisely limits the powers of the central government. And in reality, we have the exact opposite. The erosion has mainly been predicated on the power of the Congress to regulate interstate commerce, which was given to the Congress so that one state could not impose taxes on another state. It has been interpreted over the years to mean much, much more. We reject those rulings and believe they should be overturned. 
Even if someone could find a topic and make a convincing argument that it should involve the national government, the onus is still on them to amend the Constitution. The Founders supplied that function to us for a reason. Over the past hundred years, supporters of big government knew they could not muster the political strength necessary to get their agenda through the amendment process. So they found another way. They appointed and approved justices to the courts who would simply distort the interpretation of the Constitution in their favor. We've all heard the Constitution is a living document. Well, that is pure nonsense. The Constitution and the Bill of Rights are written in plain English. We know exactly what the Founders meant. It is unacceptable that we have allowed big government proponents to take the easy way out, bypassing the legitimate hurdles of the amendment process, and simply purport the Constitution means something other than what it clearly says. Ladies and gentlemen, as we on this day reflect on that which was bestowed upon us, let us realize that we are, there are forces that wish to undermine that blessing. The time to act is now. Like it or not, we must become politically involved. When you are evaluating candidates for public office, ask them, do you believe the Constitution is written in plain English and means what it says, or is it okay for the national government to be meddling in education and health care? Ask them for their stance on the horrid and unbelievable McCain-Feingold legislation that limits political speech. Demand a straight answer to the question, will you work to reverse the perversion of the meaning of the term public use that has allowed local governments to take our homes and our land for unscrupulous purposes? Amen. Today, the Bill of Rights is 216 years young. And I say young for a reason. We who espouse the virtues of individual freedom, personal responsibility, and limited government have been accused of living in the past or just wanting to take us back in time. Well, nothing could be further from the truth. It is exactly the opposite. Remember what I said about our long human history and think of it in that context. Before the United States, there were kings, despots, and democracies, all of which violated freedom of individuals. Now there are new types of oppression, communism, socialism, but it's the same thing. Some people enslaved to others. In the grand scheme of things, the founding of the United States of America and the ascendancy of individual freedom is new, different, exciting, a true breath of fresh air and enlightenment. Those who want big government are the ones taking us backwards, back to a time when people were subservient to the state or other people. Abridging freedom takes us backwards. Advancing liberty moves us forward. Thank you.